There we are. Now you should be able to hear me. Uh, I decided to take a slightly different route here, not so much the analytical side as presenting um, a bit of fun I had uh, as part of teaching Egyptology. And the title, When Nefertiti Met the Dinosaurs on the Spaceship, obviously refers to one of the sessions of Doctor Who. So what I don't want to do today is to trace the uh, background knowledge on Nefertiti as included on that, even I, I strive on that. Um, I also not I want uh, to go away from the Egyptological answer to the question, who or what is Nefertiti? I go on a specific way how to look on Nefertiti uh, as it is done in many, many other examples as part of the Egyptomania and how we could utilize that back into the Egyptology. And uh, that is possible because I want to start with this quote by Friederike Seyfried who said, every individual is free to compose a vita for Nefertiti that suits him or her best. And I think that really nicely outlines what I would like to do today, to start from a presentation of Nefertiti as an icon. So continuing something which I did in an earlier publication already and bring this into my placement of myself as an educator in Egyptology. And that obviously uh, strives also to the reception um, of ancient Egypt and how this could be presented in different ways. Um, I have to out myself a little bit as a Doctor Who fanatic um, and that was maybe the starting point for this and specifically uh, one series or one episode of series seven um, which is the 11th Doctor, uh, Matt Smith, and the episode is entitled Dinosaurs on the Spaceship. So as you can see, Nefertiti does not even feature in the title, but she has nearly more screen time than the dinosaurs have. And here you see uh, the starting encounter of uh, Nefertiti with the Doctor. And as you can see, even I said I might not follow the idea who or what Nefertiti was, but there's a very specific way how Nefertiti is presented, and that is as a very strong woman, as you can see in the fearful face of the doctor. And that is the um, script of this early, um, yeah, of the starting sequence of this episode, which actually uh, is set in the inner palace chamber, as the doctor has um, saved Egypt together with Nefertiti of uh, large intergalactic mollusks. And uh, so as you can see here, the way how Nefertiti acts is a very interesting one and in some way reflects our perception of Nefertiti as a um, personality of ancient Egypt and reflects some of the Egyptological um, research as well. And is actually something what we also see in titles, Nefertiti uh, has herself. So the plot of this specific Doctor Who um, episode is that the doctor has rescued Egypt from a swarm of giant alien locusts. And uh, at the end of the scene I just had outlined, he gets a call uh, that Earth is threatened, um, Earth in the future is threatened because a Silurian arc is on crash course with um, the Earth. And the doctor immediately goes there and Nefertiti joins him. So she hops into the TARDIS and tries to join him and goes directly from New Kingdom, ancient Egypt, to 
modern Earth somewhere in a uh, military setting of the time is not even highlighted. And what it's really interesting that this very future Silurian arc has uh, a an, an load of dinosaurs on them. So in the whole interaction, uh, which also involves the companions at the time, Amy and Rory, the doctor always calls Nefertiti Nephi and creates a very personal bond to these um, icon which in Egyptology it's a near non-existing person. Um, there is interestingly enough a further uh, temporary companion on board which is an early 20th century adventurer John Riddle who is very uh, masochist, very chauvinist, even he seems to be quite charming and uh, he tries his charm on Nefertiti and fails. So she really uh, despises him. And when he then very overly flirts with, with Nefertiti, she offers to execute him. Nevertheless, throughout the episode, she gets attracted to him and says at some point that she would prefer him in comparison to her dull husband. So really nice um, sideline there. And uh, the royal personality of Nefertiti comes also in when Amy says that she is a very big fan of her. So really coming in from the Egyptomania angle of the present day world, um, then she assumes, oh, if you know me and if you interact with me, then you must be in green. So how do the dinosaurs come in? And that is actually a very interesting uh, subplot. Uh, the owner of this Silurian Ark, um, who interjected uh, the Ark with another spaceship and stole the dinosaurs, um, is in the way how to monetize um, rare objects. And he saw the dinosaurs as rare objects, and then he trades them with Nefertiti, whom he values more and think uh, selling her on might bring more money. Um, and he demands Nefertiti. Um, the doctor refuses to hand Nefertiti over, but she um, actually turns herself in in order to be responsible for the others and save the others. Uh, but as Solomon sees her as a bartered object, that is very clear, a monetary bartered object and not in person. Um, so Nefertiti uh, shows her strength. She pins Solomon down to the crown with her own weapons and very clear defined strength because she says she dislikes disrespectful uh, behavior. So, hmm. What is the point of all this, except the nice um, quote by the doctor, don't mess with Egyptian queens, Solomon. And I would like to uh, present on that or uh, show you how I started from my very personal love for Doctor Who um, and tried to utilize this kind of a different way into education for my classes. Uh, I've taken very active and interactive teaching approach uh, based on group works, um, going away from lectures and try to achieve that students uh, learn themselves and I'm sort of the guide into this. I have to say, uh, Lampeter does not have an Egyptology. Uh, I set out a comparative program called Ancient Civilizations that the students very actively try to get to grips with several way how civilizations um, appear, exist and um, go away. So, and I thought that this particular um, episode could actually be the starting point for something very, very weird in order to engage students. Um, and that was a time travel game 
I set out as group work, uh, starting from the premise that in particular modules such as the one I was teaching where I only had one week for ancient Egypt, uh, I needed a different approach, how to get to grips with ancient Egyptian history. And uh, which students often found dull as the kind of history and follow the right timelines and so on. So I gave certain chapters of the Oxford History of Ancient Egypt by Shaw to the students. They had to choose one of the chapters, uh, read and prepare them. And then we started in game day. In game day, when they came together in a group, uh, and this group was a declared time travel agency, and they had to prepare an advertisement for their time period. Um, they had to describe the time period, outline best thing, highlight what is best of the time, and in the end, lure as many visitors as possible to this time period. And they presented properly their product, their time period, and then in the end, we uh, ask everyone to which time period they want to, to travel. Um, and this travel agency got the most money. Um, that worked like a treat and people actually read. Uh, people even read other chapters in order to see how they could pitch their time frame to another one. And that after years after I had difficulties to get the students to read stuff. And then when we embarked on uh, coming up with kind of mind mapping, uh, timelines, periods, kingdoms, intermediate periods, I realized that they were far more engaged and asking on things, question their own half knowledge, try to come up with uh, interactive ways how to do that. So that was really interesting to see. And I decided to continue with that. Um, however, COVID struck. And obviously it's very difficult to bring this in. And I was thinking how to translate these interactions into online teaching. And that was something where this episode, this representation of specifically Nefertiti in Doctor Who became even more important. Uh, when we embarked on this kind of travel game in an um, online version of uh, yet synchronous teaching, but online teaching. Um, again, they came back together in uh, groups and the three groups were asked to again set out their time travel advert. I gave them now more time. It was not bound to the class situation. They could do it however they wanted. Um, they then uploaded their results. And in the next group discussion, we went through them and really not only uh, were measuring who would like to travel where, but also analyzed why it did chime with the other groups and audiences and why they decided to go there. So, and there were very creative outcomes there. I would like to uh, show you then later uh, uh, the most interesting one, uh, which was an advert video, but we also had a quite traditional one, more kind of leaflet uh, type of things and a website advert. So obviously the website advert does not come out nicely here. And um, please bear in mind, this is first year uh, students. And for many of them, it was the first time to engage with ancient Egypt. So in this uh, game situation, not all facts were right, but I actually thought, that was not so important. And it came out in the discussion that then the ones who created these, again, fictional things, starting by the science fiction um, inspired interest, uh, reconfirmed them to go back with uh, 
the true facts how to say. So um, after that, and before you before I show you the video, um, by the way, the end is very interesting, and that leads me back to a research interest I have, which is Nefertiti. In the end of the episode, Nefertiti stays with Riddell. So the adventurer she despised at the beginning, she was very snappy about, and with whom she swung throughout the whole episode. They are going back to Africa. Uh, it's not further narrowed down where in Africa, at the beginning of the 20th century. And as you can see here with her Salurian uh, weapon, she is the one who in their adventures will be the strong one, the leading one, so having captured this quite chauvinist adventurer. Um, and she also says that I found it very interesting, uh, going back to the role of queens um, in ancient Egypt, she can't go back to ancient Egypt because she sees herself as acting irresponsibly as she abandoned her people and did not fulfill her role. So, um, and a very, yeah, eye-twinkling comment now. Uh, one of my students said that might be the reason why we don't have a tomb for her. So, um, I would like to uh, thank my students for that. And I would like now, hopefully it works, show you the video. Um, by one student, Lloyd Clement, who led one of the groups, and that is the video, the first intermediate period of ancient Egypt.